Hello everyone, welcome back to another Luma video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at beta 21.2 of FL Studio, and we're gonna go over some of the different additions to this beta, as well as checking it out in the actual program. First of all, and probably most importantly, the FL Cloud addition to FL Studio is being added. So if you don't know what that is, essentially it is like Splice, except it is built into your DAW, so there's no need for a bridge. It is also free, so you don't need to pay a subscription. However, you can pay a subscription to get unlimited access to it out a credit system. So that's really cool because you'll basically be able to get an infinite amount of samples without having to pay for credits. There is a credit system that you can pay for a one-time purchase though, rather than how Splice has it set up where you pay for uh, basically credits every month, which I don't think is a very good plan. Uh, personally, I like FL Studio's version a lot better. There's also something called stem separation that's being added. Now this is a feature that allows you to take a loop or a song and apply stem separation, and that extracts the vocals, instruments, drums, bass. If you're thinking about making any purchases based off of this video, I'd say hold off and until the official version is released, this beta can be used in trial version. Definitely do that first. So this is the official form that FL Studio has posted here. We can see this is all the information about the FL Cloud, about subscriptions, and then we can also look at the different features that have been added. We have FL Cloud Mastering, which is a faster way to master your mix down for different platforms and for different genres, which I am skeptical of because I've always been kind of skeptical of things that master your music. However, with the more technology that we have, I think that it has potential. But again, I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know. In browser search here, it extends your local browse search via direct shortcut to FL Cloud Sounds from the panel below at the bottom of your browser when you search your local files. So I assume what this means is when you have FL Cloud Sounds downloaded, they will also show up in your files, uh, which makes sense. The Sounds tab now follows the main FL Studio theme. So there is a Sounds tab where you see your samples and other things like that. Here's your stem separation. Themes now includes customizable audio frequency to color customization used responsibly. Kepler is a new plugin that comes with the producer edition of FL Studio. So if you have producer edition, you will have this by default. It's an authentic Juno 6 emulation uh, included free and retrospectively in FL Studio producer edition and up. That means if you purchased FL Studio edition before this update, you'll still get it very similar to how FL Studio has done their updates in the past, which I'm very fond of and appreciate them for doing that quite a bit. So now that we've looked at this, um, if you want to read the changes, here it is. If you want to read the bug fixes, here they are. Let's hop into FL Studio and check out these new features. I clicked around in here a little bit. So we also have the sounds. So we're going to click to activate the beta and try FL Cloud. And I'm going to sign in real quick. Okay, and now that we're in, it's going to download take a look here, get started. I'm going to skip this because I just want to get a general experience. And it looks like we have some packs already. Can I just search the cloud for something like drum loop? Nice, dang, okay. And whoa, there's already over 307 pages. If I click the plus here, it's going to download it and then we can listen to it. This isn't really a drum loop, <laughs> but that's okay because we're on the 307th page. Cool. Yeah. And then I assume I have infinite credits, perhaps? I'm not sure because it doesn't really say. I think I have uh, like credit, like all the credits right now. So let's get a pad. Okay, wait. So yeah, so far it seems very similar to Splice. I like how you can change the uh, BPM. Oh, does it automatically sync to your BPM? So if it's at 128, if I turn this up, no, it doesn't. If sync is, oh, there we go. Okay, now it's doing it. That is very cool. By clicking the sync button twice, by, like by default, it didn't have it enabled. UI said it was enabled, but by clicking it twice, it actually enables it. So now it is synced to the BPM by default. Wow, that's actually, that is really neat. That is huge. Already, this is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and try out the extract feature to try and get different stems out of something. And now we have my song here that's releasing tomorrow, by the way, check it out. If I go here and click extract stems, 
click OK to download it. It's going to download this 168.41 megabyte program. I've not seen a download before. Estimated time four minutes. Okay, so this actually is like serious. Okay, let's extract these things and see how well it does because I do have the original file, right? Like I have the actual project. So I'm pretty sure, like I know what the original things sound like. Okay, it looks like it's finished the extraction now. So let's take a look at the vocals. There are some vocals in the song. These are not vocals. It did a good job with the drums and the bass. So there's also no uh, percussion in this section, although there are transients, so I think that's what it's picking up on here. That's pretty accurate to what it sounds like without any of the instruments playing at this point. Yeah, I mean, this is the pad and the instruments and the acid bass all playing here, and this just the bass is pretty accurate. And as well as the drums, you could tell me this is a stem, honestly, and I'd believe you. Except for those transients where the acid base is. Other than that, it did a really good job. Surprisingly good. I want to try something with the vocals next. So this is my single, Sticks. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. If you have listened to it, then you'll know there's like some weird vocals here. And I think it's going to be a challenge for this thing to extract those vocals. But I want to see what it does nonetheless. So let's go ahead and extract those. Last one, what I did do is check vocals here. Even though there's barely any vocals in the song, I think it was trying to pull vocals out where vocals weren't. So that's why we got some like weird like acid base thinking it was the vocals. But this one actually does have vocals, although they are a bit weird. Let's see how it does. Judging by the waveforms, this looks pretty good. <laughs> For how chaotic and weird the vocals are, this is honestly surprisingly good. The bass is going to be tricky. So, in the actual song, the bass takes up a lot of the high end as well. But if we listen to these two together, the instruments, that does a pretty good job of imitating it. The vocals are, yeah, chaotic, but like surprisingly good. I honestly don't have any tracks that are like very standard that I'd be willing to test this out on because I don't want to get copyright strike. So go ahead and try that on on your own. Overall, I think this is a very, very good addition to FL Studio. The fact that you can do it in DAW now is huge. I don't know any other DAW that's doing this, so I'm really excited and I am very happy with these additions to FL Studio. I just wanted to do a comparison of my new single, 144 Persona, the mastered version coming from the mastering program that's built into FL now, and then also the version that I mastered myself. And I can tell you right off the bat, I like mine better. Definitely no bias there. There are a few things that I, I genuinely dislike about the auto mastered version. Let me just play you a little bit of each song. Someone asked me if I could show Beppo in a video. This is Beppo now. She's much older. She's like a full-grown cat now. The thing that I dislike most about the mastered version, and when I refer to the master version, I'm talking about the auto master version. And when I talk about the default version or the normal version, I'm talking about the one that I mastered myself. The thing that I dislike about the master version is it gets rid of a lot of that energy that I have in my, ma in my master. There's just not a lot of high end. We pull up an EQ here. You can see that there is some things that are like hitting the same threshold as the bass. 
But ideally, I would want to hear more of this, like, clarity. And then I'd have a clipper on it or something. Especially with this genre of music, the bass is like powerful, but it's not loud. It's sustained, but it's not overwhelming. Yeah, so again, I'm I'm sticking with the claim that I'm not going to be using this to master my songs. However, I will use it to reference if I'm curious what a automatically mastered, generic mastered song would sound like. Thank you for watching. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed. Comment if you have something to say, and I will see you in the next video.